So I love, I love the Lord and I am so thankful for him. And you have a great church. This is a good place to be with good people. I thank you, Pastor Daniel, for your word this morning. I, that, it, did, it did my heart good to hear that. In fact, I want to give a little example. Praise the Lord, church. Because as he was speaking over there, I was reminded what a man of God did to us years ago. You repeated the command. You did not obey the command. You say, praise the Lord. Now let's obey that command. Lord, we love you, Jesus, and magnify you and exalt your holy name. We glorify you, Lord, and praise you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are obeying that now. You are praising the Lord. God, we love you, Jesus, and magnify your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Just a small example of the difference in repeating a command and obeying a command. And so when he was speaking, the Lord reminded me of that. We learned, man of God did that to us years ago in our church, and it's embedded into my brain after all of that. So when God gave them that command in Matthew 28 and 19, and said, baptize in the name, that's why the disciples went out. They didn't just, they didn't repeat the command. They obeyed the command to be baptized in Jesus' name. And that was the difference. And so I'm thankful for a man God who will stand up here and preach the word of God and teach the word of God to us. And so I give honor to your pastor and his precious wife today and their wonderful family, the whole Hogbin family. Absolutely. And the Gabriel family. Amen. They're all a part of all of this right here. Helping this to function. That God is a good God. And so I give honor to you all and to you the people of God. I have had such a good time with you all this week. I have eaten so well. I'm going to have to go back to America and, and straighten myself out. Help me, Lord. But that's, you know, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, breaking of bread. So you know when they were fellowship and they were eating too. I thank the Lord for that. But if you'd like to open up your Bibles to Psalms chapter 78. So I've gotten to be around a lot of you all in lunches. And in services with your young people. And I'm just like, thank you, God. Y'all have blessed me. And so my prayer today is that I could be used to be a blessing to you all. Because I feel like God is wanting to do, like I said, something very special in this place. And don't fret about this, these scriptures at first. I promise it's going to get better. <laughs> Psalm 78, 39 through 42. I'm so sorry I gave that the last minute. Whoever's doing your little, I apologize. For he remembered that they were but flesh, is the Lord remembering, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness, ooh, and grieve him in the desert. He's talking about his people Israel. Yea, they turned back and tempted God, and this is interesting, and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. God, we thank you so much for your sweet presence that has already been in this place. It's here with us, Lord. And we are grateful, Lord, God, of that, for that, Lord. We never want to take it for granted, Lord, to come together in one mind and one accord and that you will come rest in the praises of your people, Lord. We open up our hearts and our minds to you, Jesus, that the seed of your word will go forth and be planted, God, in fertile ground and take deep roots in our hearts. God, that whatever you desire to do, Lord, do it. Do it through me, oh God. Do it through every one of us, oh Lord, in Jesus' name, that we are simply conduits of your spirit, Lord, to flow out, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. And let me speak no more, no less of exactly what you want me to say in Jesus' name. And you may be seated. I say that because they know I like to talk. I'm like, oh, Jesus. But I promise it's going to get better after them scriptures. Like, it's kind of depressing starting out like that. We had such a great move of God. And then I'm all, they grieved him in the wilderness. He is speaking of his children of Israel. 
he had called out of Egypt that they had been in slavery for over 400 years. And he sent Moses the deliverer to bring them out of that slavery. But in all of that, they complained and murmured. And this is the God who delivered them with 10 plagues upon Egypt. He showed his mighty hand in Egypt and to his people, showing this is how I'm going to bring you out. And I love the even fact that when they came to the Red Sea, sea blocked them and the enemy is behind them. The Lord and his majesty and power parted that sea for them. Whoosh! And they walked through on dry ground. And the awesome thing about our God, what was their deliverance, was their enemy's demise. Because then that same Red Sea, when the enemy walked through, they didn't have the promise of the Lord. And it went whoosh. And he said, you'll see those Egyptians no longer that were they were chasing behind you. And I said, that's the kind of God we serve. He had provided manna every day. Manna came down from heaven for them. And fed them in the middle, middle of a wilderness. Because God knew the ground was probably barren in those places. And they didn't have just time to sow and reap. So he said, I'm going to provide for you. Because I know you can't provide for yourself out here. Then even brought water from a rock. For them to drink. This was a constant supply. But yet, it's very inter interesting what the Bible even says here. They limited the Holy One of Israel. And I want to say today, as I start out with this, let there be no limitations in this house today. No limitations. We are not going to limit our God today. That's why I say, God, whatever you want to do, we are free range to you. God, you do whatever you desire in this place and in our lives. But I'm praying that we all get a breakthrough that it's not just in here, but you give God a complete access when we walk out of this building and you say no limitations in my life at all, almighty God. Because the word limit there, you go, if you even just go to good old Miriam Webster's, it's something that bounds, restrains, or confines. And then if you can go back and search a little deeper in the concordance, it comes from an exact another word that means to mark out, set a mark, even confusion. That they may set a mark on God. They limited bounds in which they thought he could work and he should work. And the Bible says because they did that, they limited him. Oh God, the God who did all of those wonders for him, yet they could limit him. They confined him to their ideas of his ability. No, no, you got to stay within that. And as I was reading that, the Lord quickened me. Natalie, that's why I allow situations sometimes to come in your lives. A wide array of situations. Because sometimes we can limit God by how we view him. You're like, wait a minute, Sister Natalie. You mean I can limit God Almighty, who has all power in heaven and earth, and everything belongs to him. I can limit him? Absolutely. I got proof for it in Mark chapter 6. That he was walking in his own country, Sister Stella. And he's around his own people. That the Bible even says... That they knew his wonders, that they knew his wisdom, and they had seen his mighty works. But it goes on to say that he could do no mighty work in that place. Except put his hand on a couple and save a cute couple sick folk, heal a couple sick folk. Why? Because the Bible says that they questioned, is not this the carpenter? The son of Mary? They limited this God who in that country could do no mighty work, but would walk over to another town. Whoosh, blinded eyes are open. The lame walk. Deaf ears are unstopped. And his power didn't change from there to there. It didn't change from one church to the next. What happened is that when he walked in, that one town said, oh, oh it's God manifest in the flesh. It's God almighty walking amongst us oh and he gave those eyes so he can make them see he gave those ears so he can make them hear oh God in Lindbrook today let us take the limitations off of our God in Jesus name and whatever he desires to do God we say do it in Jesus name you say sister Natalie wait a minute why does he allow all this stuff to happen in our lives it's because sometimes it takes those situations 
to open up our eyes to a greater revelation of who he is. Because sometimes we can have great faith in one area of our lives. Oh, he's going to heal my body. Hallelujah. Yes, he will. Oh, but he is not going to save my children. Oh, I don't know about that financial situation over there. I don't know how he's going to work that out. Oh, but he'll do this right here. And it's all of us. Woe is me. We can have great faith for one thing and weak faith for another. But I'm feeling like God wants to stir up faith in every area of our life. That's why sometimes, as I was reading that, he allows situations. Because it's one thing for him to be your healer, Brother Daniel. It's another for him to be my healer. And sometimes it takes me getting sick and me praying and having faith. And that sometimes with finances, it's like me being in a hard spot and watching God provide for this need, a new car, a new job, or bring in something that I needed. I'll rejoice with you, Sister Deb, but he becomes more real to me when it happens for me personally. And so God, if sometimes, oh Lord, situations have to occur, even lonely times, for him to say, I am the friend that stick it closer than a brother. How can we know that, Sister Levy, until we get in these hard times sometimes, oh God, and we feel that loss and that loneliness, but he says, I'll just show up in a stronger and greater way for you, and I'll show myself to you and reveal who I am to you in a greater way, oh God, do that for all of that, for all of us, because he said, for so long you have seen me as that over here. But he's wanting to do, he said, I want to show myself to you as this today. So sometimes it does take hardships and trials. Sometimes it takes situations that we have to pray through and get through. But he said, I'm just showing myself and revealing myself greater to you today. So whatever you're needing, you have come to the right place for God to reveal his glory to you today in a mighty and great way. Why and how did they limit the Holy One of Israel? I kept going through my mind as I'm reading that. Limit, limit this awesome, all-powerful God. And when you go back to verse 42, it says, they remembered not his hand. The word hand means power. In that scripture, they remembered not his hand. They remembered not his power. Now, I'm going to be honest. There are some things we are meant to forget. And I'm going to go on some things that I actually went to in the, at the ladies' conference. So if you ladies, y'all just heard it once. Y'all just like, repetition is the greatest teacher. I always say that. Because you got to repeat yourself sometimes for somebody to get it. They're like, oh, I got it this third, fifth, tenth time. That's all of us. Well, I, sometimes we go through multiple things, same thing over and over. It's like, okay, God, I got you. Let me get it this time, Lord. Let me get it, Lord. So I don't have to go through it 10 times. But some things we are meant to forget. Philippians 3, 13 through 14, it says, forgetting those things that are behind. Forgetting those hard things. Those, those things that caused hurt or pain. And we reach forth to those things that are before, even pressing forth toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. That we are supposed to forget those things. Oh God, remember ye not the former things of old. Neither consider the things of old. Oh God, help us not to remember those things that sometimes bring pain. And they bring her. Oh, now I'm going to get down here with y'all. This is the fun part. I refrain myself for the longest time trying to stand behind the pulpit. If y'all notice, I'll probably even stutter up there while I'm doing it because I'm like, I like to be out in the middle with all of y'all. Oh, see, it flows easier when I'm out here. Whoo, thank you, Jesus. There's things that are behind. And you're like, wait a minute, Sister Natalie. Even if it's a memory from 20 years ago, 15, five years ago, those things are hard to, rem- to, hard to forget. Those things that a certain smell or a certain name or a certain thing happens and it pulls up an old memory and that pain is still there. That hurt is still there. You're like, oh, I can't help it because sometimes you can't help it in a day. Let's be honest. Something from the past rises up because you see something and it brings a thought or a memory. But here's the greatness of our God. God took me to Ephesians 4 and 26. 
Because I want to leave you, I don't want to just build faith and like help you build faith in this place, but then when you walk here, you have no practical application of what to do and how to, how to live beyond those doors right here. It does us no good. Because you're in here one day, two days a week, but you're living out there all the rest. So we got to learn how we can live this thing. And so God took me to Ephesians 4 and 26. It says, be ye angry. <gasps> oh, he says, we're allowed to. Thank you, Jesus. A person cut you off on the road. You're like, oh, I'm allowed to be angry. But he says, sin not. Oh, Jesus. Oh, they even got it up there as a visual for you. For all you visual learners, I'll be the audio one for you. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. And I was reading that, and I've read it for years and years and years, and the Lord stopped me, and he said, why, Natalie? Why don't let you let the sun go down on your wrath? And I was like, I don't really know, Lord. It just sounds kind of noble, you know? And I knew when he asked me, he wanted me to search it out. So I started doing research on what the brain does when we go to sleep. It is actually very active. Ladies, so good to see you all again. I had lunch with them. It's actually very active, Sister Scylla, that when we go to sleep at night, we take all of the memories, everything you thought of that day, I can give them the science behind it. Our brain shrinks. We like start, it starts cleaning. It's all kinds of cool stuff, the way God created our bodies. All the memories, it starts taking them up and storing them away. And it starts filing them away in the hard drive of our brain. What it deems is unimportant, it will file it and just clean it all. But everything you thought was important, it starts putting in the hard drive of your brain that night. And God spoke to me. He said, Natalie, before you go to bed at night... He said, clean all that. Do not go to bed with any wrath. Oh, you put that scripture up for me one more time. You fill in the blank right there. Don't let the sun go down upon your despair. Don't let the sun go down upon your hopelessness. Don't let the sun go down on your fear or anxiety. Don't let the sun go down on you fill in the blank. He said, Natalie, because once it's filed away that night, it is harder to uproot from your brain and your mind. And this is the awesome thing about our God. Is as I was talking to my brother, who he is going for his doctorate degree in psychology. He's so smart. He said, Natalie, that's psychology. I said, that's been around a whole lot longer than psychology. I said, that is our god college right there. He said, do you realize they teach you, you never pull a memory from its original. You pull it from the last time you thought about it. And it right there exploded in my brain. That's why you can have two people go through the exact same thing and 10 years down the road see it completely different. It's what they've added to it every time they've pulled it out or what they've taken away. And God said, what do you add to that memory every time it resurfaces? Even if every time it comes back and you have to add more love and forgiveness, God forgive them for they knew not what they did. Forgive their words. God, I know they hurt. I'm allowed to be angry, Lord, but I'm not going to sin in this. And I'm not going to bed tonight with that. Oh God, I forgive them again in Jesus' name. God, yes, you are going to take care of my life. I am somebody in Jesus' name. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. No, that will not happen. Lord, you are my redeemer. I will not fear in Jesus' name. Because when you go to bed and you start filing away every one of the thoughts of the day, file them away with peace and hope and joy and love. Because there are some things that we are supposed to forget. God wants us to. And you're like, wait a minute, Sister Natalie, that memory is going to come again. And it may very well. But that same hurt won't be there. The same pain, you won't pull that out the next time. Because every time you've been bathed in that thing in love, more and more forgiveness, and more and even in fear and anxiety, you've been hope, no, power, love, sound mind. Every time before you're going to go to bed at night, we're going to zip them thoughts up, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we're all going to go to bed tonight different. Now, I am all for early morning prayer. I've been trying to get up at 5 o'clock. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for Sister Ezra, who prays with me and helps me. But there is something about locking it down at night. Let prayer be the key of the morning, but also the lock of the night. We're going to lock down all of those thoughts. 
So that way, oh, when they come again, mm -mm, they're not going to come the same way that second time when you pull it out. Because we are meant to forget some things. There is a power in forgetting. Thank you, God, for that. However, there are some things we are meant to remember. Ooh, we're meant to remember. Oh, God. And I pray today we do both. If we, when we come down later to this altar in just a bit, that you might have to take a minute to say, God, I want to forget some things today. Let this be a new day and a new start for me. I want to forget some things of my past, things that have been bothering me. I want to set them aside. But God, today, I want to remember. Remember, remember the moment of your deliverance. Remember the moment of your salvation, your salvation, a continual salvation unto him. Remember moments of joy and peace and hope and love. Bring them back out over and over. Yes, he did provide for me. I remember that. You testify of his goodness. You testify of his faithfulness. You bring to remembrance all of these things. Psalms 20 and 7 says, remember the name of the Lord. Yes. That's why we're talking about the name of Jesus. We are remembering the name of the Lord and that it is a high tower that the righteous run into and we find our safety in it. David was all the time talking about remembering. I remember you on my bed at night, Lord, as I'm laying down because you are my help. He was remembering that God is his help. The Lord would even command that memorials be built so they wouldn't forget. When the children of Israel, when they finally went in the promised land, and once again, he parted the Jordan River for them that time. He said, I want you to take 12 men, one out of each one of the tribes of Israel. He said, you get a large stone. So you know they had big ones because they had to put it on their shoulder. How big them the little bitty one? Stack them up. Build that memorial, he said, because when your children come by years later, you remind them and they ask, mom and dad, what's that about? Grandma and grandpa, what is that for? You can point back and you say, I'm going to tell you what our God did. I'm going to show you what he did for us. I'm going to remind you. We're going to remember how he brought us through, how he parted the Jordan, how he gave us Jericho. That way we don't forget mom and dad. Like, remember and share to your children. Let let them know do not forget in Jesus name of what his goodness has done sometimes you want to you want to protect your kids not let let them know everything let them know how mom and dad might have struggled at one time in their finances but how God provided and he made a way when there seemed to be no way you know you might not have to go into all the details of your life you might want to keep some of it light but mom and dad, hey, made some really bad decisions back in the day. We were headed in the wrong direction. But God delivered. God had his hand on us. God redeemed. You show them and teach them and tell them. Because one day you want them to have their own stories. Want them, one day you want them to build their own memorials before the Lord of his goodness and his faithfulness. Oh, God. And you write it down. I always, okay, I'm a journaler. I've been journaling since I was young, before it's popular. <laughs> write it down Amen. of his goodness so you have something to reference back to. That way when the enemy comes to you one night and says, he's not going to make a way. He won't do that. You say, uh, 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 uh. I'm pulling out my book of remembrance. Psh, psh. Fourth page right here. He made a way then. And he's going to make a way now. In Jesus' name. He is going to do it. You pull out that book. That's why you even testify to one another. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. That's how we're going to overcome here. And you know what that does to us? It builds faith. And God needs our faith to work. That's why we even sing up here and we do this before this word goes forth. Because if this word goes forth but it is not mixed with faith the bible says that it will not be profitable to any of you it's got to be mixed with your faith so that's why you testify and remember and bring that book of remembrance out but as i was studying all of this you know what god showed me natalie i have my own book of remembrance oh my god look at our god 
Malachi 3, 16 and 17. You're doing so good back there. I just want to let you know that. Thank you so much. Can not give honor to its due? For all the people working that make all this function, thank you. For everybody that cleans the floor, I really appreciate that because I was a cleaner. So I pay attention. I'm like, oh, look at that. They vacuumed these floors. They look so good. Everybody who set up that baptistry out there, thank you for that. It's all of us working together doing this thing. And I give honor to you. But Malachi 3, 16 through 17 says, Then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another what we are doing here today. And the Lord hearkened, he heard. And it, and it, book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. A book of remembrance was written and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. Oh, that's so good to know. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. That God has his own book, Sister Maddie, of remembrance. That as we begin to talk about him and love him. He said, let me write about them. The faithfulness of Sister Lolly. The faithfulness of the Gabriel family. The faithfulness of Sister Rosie. He starts writing it all down. Because, you know, it's a powerful thing when we remember, but it's even more powerful thing when the Lord remembers. When God remembers. Now, when we hear the word remembered, we it suggests we think he forgot. But if you go throughout the Bible and the word when it says that God remembered, that's not what that word means. It's, for example, it's like this. You send your husband out to the grocery store, you ladies. And he comes back with all the bags. And you're pulling it out and you say, oh, you remembered the eggs. You didn't forget them. You were mindful of them. Yay, thank you. That's what that remembered means, is that he didn't forget. He was mindful of them. But as I read some of the ways and people that he remembered, watch in what correlates when God remembers. Genesis 8 and 1, he remembered Noah and every living thing. He calls wind to blow and waters to abate. After the flood. Genesis 19 and 29, it says, he remembered Abraham and he sent Lot out of the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. That uncle had been praying. And so he got his nephew out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis 30 and 22, he says, he remembered Rachel and caused her womb to open and she ceased her barrenness. Exodus 2 and 24, he remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he heard the groanings of Israel and sent a deliverer, Moses, to get them out. If you notice something, every time God remembered, he acted. He moved. He said, oh, wait a minute. I've seen their faithfulness. I've watched them. I'm remembering my promise to them that I spoke this to them three years ago or even 20 years ago. And as he watches the faithfulness of his people, he begins to act and to move. God has given you a word in this place. And it may be from five years ago. It may be from 10 years ago. It may be from seven years ago. God is working. He has sent me to tell you that he is remembering today. Lynbrook Church. Lynbrook Church that he is remembering brother Daniel and sister Fee every promise he has given you every word he has spoken that he is saying I've seen your faithfulness I've seen your commitment I've seen the dedication in every step forward and God is saying he is remembering today but he is remembering Lynbrook he is remembering the body of Christ and then even us individually what has he spoken to you what word is he given to you today? Oh, God. This is not a long message. I might be very surprising. Oh. They're like, oh, we know she likes to talk. <laughs> but I want God to act today. I want God to do whatever God wants to do up here today. Because I have a feeling that there are some things we need to forget today. Oh, you might have to come up here and have a moment where you forget. Jesus, I forget that. Lord, take that step of faith. And then when you go to bed tonight, lock it down. 
But then you say, God, I remember your faithfulness and your goodness to me. I remember, Lord, how you have made a way when there at times there didn't seem to be any way. How you have kept me when I didn't even realize I was being kept by the hand of God. That he has walked with me even when I didn't choose sometimes to walk with him. That he has been with me and he has guided and kept his hand on me. In Jesus' name, if you were to tell somebody that today, even when you weren't making some of the right decisions, because you had some praying people in your life, thank you God. He's been there, watching, helping all the while and that we're remembering and then today talking about baptism in jesus name if you want a moment to remember oh let today be your day if you've never had the infilling of his spirit inside of you with the evidence of speaking in tongues like it says in the book of acts it talks about in the book of acts today can be your day of a moment that you can remember that you write down in your journal and say, oh, nobody's taking that away from me because he did that for me. It is life changing and you will never be the same ever again. Oh, God, help us. But let me encourage today. You all can stand. Because then we're going to come up here and pray. And I didn't even look at my time, but I really think I did a whole lot faster than I usually do. Oh, God is so good. Because I'm hoping our altar call is a little longer. In Jesus' name. We can't get discouraged, though. Because as I was preparing this message, God said, sometimes they get confused, Natalie. Miracles, like I said, are done instantaneous. You come and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You get delivered. Thank you, Jesus. But as I was studying and I was meditating about this, God said, but when I create and build, I do it in stages, Brother Hampton. God said, I, when I'm creating something or building anything, I tend to do that in stages. And it's a process. And how do we know? Go all the way back to Genesis. He is about to create, he is creating the universe, the entire universe. And what does he do first? He says, let there be light. And there was light and he separated the light from darkness. He called the light day and he called the darkness night. Why? Because he was about to create everything in the parameters of day and night. So what did he do first? He created day and night. And that's how he does in our lives at times. You have a moment of deliverance, but he said, I'm trying to create or build in them a lifestyle of victory. So sometimes that's one step at a time, at a time, at a time. And Ms. Hannah, we cannot get discouraged sometimes in our processes to get discouraged about where we're at in the process of learning how to live an overcoming life and living in victory because he's building something in us. So when we come up here, and I'm about to invite everyone who, who, whomsoever will, let them come. And that could be your very act of faith. And God says, yes, I'll do a miracle right now in your life. Or you have a moment of building. It's a moment where you're saying God is adding to your faith virtue or to virtue knowledge. Just he keeps adding over to knowledge, temperance, temperance, patience, patience, godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness, charity. So wherever you may actually be at in that process, Miss Messiah, I love your name. Oh, look at her. She got some big shoes to fill. No, you don't. Because we all got them living inside of us. That's what makes us powerful is the contents in the vessel. We're all just vessels. My job and our job is to keep the vessel clean so as it's poured out, it's unhindered. The flow, because it's what brings the nourishment is what's inside the vessel.
vessel. Me and of myself. Oh, I'm like Paul. I'm the chiefest among them. Lord, he said sinners. I didn't want to say it, but Lord, woe is me. All of us, every one of us makes anything good in me. It's him that is within me that helps me to stay clean, Brother Paul. Helps us to stay clean. So thankful for him. So wherever you're at in this race today, because the Bible says that this is a race, wherever you may be, we're all going to take one step forward. And I hope you take it to the altar today when I call you to let you know you're not in this by yourself, that we're all going to do this thing together. So wherever you're at, if you're the forgetting part, if you're the remembering part, you're the building, God, you got to build something in me today. If this is brand new and you need the Holy Ghost, wherever you're at in the process, today is your day. God wants to do something for you. That's the great thing about our God. He can be the deliverer to you in one moment while he is the healer in another. The provider in another. The hope in another and he can do that all in this place today. So if you would like, if you'd step forward and we are going to pray together in an act of faith, if you'd like to come up to this altar and that we are going to pray together in one mind and one accord. And this is what I always like to say. It's okay to get to help yourself first. You know, on the, you're on the airplane and they said, if the oxygen drops, put the mask on yourself first and then help the person beside you. Because you don't do any good if you sitting there and you're not making it. You put the oxygen on yourself first. Then when you get that strength, then you go pray with somebody. Now, if you already got your oxygen before you ever even let, you, you know, you, you strong already. Then I'll give you the absolute, go for it, start praying for everybody in Jesus' name. To go forth, lady to lady, man to man that we pray for one another. And I think first we're gonna lift our hands and let's do this thing together about forgetting. Let Lord, we're gonna forget anything that we may need to forget, Lord. We surrender, God, any thought, Lord, that is dried, Lord, in our lives, God, to take possession of our mind, God, and our mindsets, Lord. God, we release them to you today, God. God, because you want to remember, Lord, so we got to lay aside any weight, Lord, that has been a weight in our lives, God, for so long. God, discouragement or despair, even mindsets that says, I can't, I can't, I can't. I say you to you today, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I speak hope to your future. I speak peace to your mind in Jesus' name. I speak love when you have not felt loved. I speak to whomever in this building has not felt loved at times, that you felt abandoned. Oh God, I speak, God, that you will feel loved by his arms and his mercy and his grace, that he wraps himself around you to bring strength to you and help, that we forget those things that are behind and we press forward to those things that are before us, the good things, the blessings, the favor. I speak the favor of God in Jesus name that he will bring favor in your life where you have been discouraged it has felt that everything is God against you it has felt that everything is against you but I say that it will turn for you in Jesus name in the la corrio si o to be a sata yandala corrio si ata be o to lo rio si ata now if you have already done forgetting now it's time to remember Lord I remember your goodness and your faithfulness I remember your peace and your hope and your joy God I bring to remembrance all the things that you have done in my life and I give you glory and praise I release you to pray for one another oh I release you to pray for one another oh God you are glorious and as you begin worship him we worship you almighty God we praise you oh God because we want to go deeper than we have ever gone before